She's a video game industry producer with 26 years under her belt. Please welcome to the stage, Heather Chandler. Good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. I actually worked with Kay on Fortnite as well, and it was great to see her tonight and see what Epic's up to. Today, I want to talk about how you can use games to celebrate and share culture with um, a game that I worked on with a large group of people um, called Choctaw Stickball. And like, I, I could talk for an hour about this experience, so I had to condense it down into five minutes. The top, uh, the, the top line is, is that the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians was interested in creating a game around their culture specifically a game called stickball, which is something that they play and enjoy um, with all the tribes and stuff in Mississippi. Stickball is a game that is several hundred years old and it has been played um, by tribes to help settle disputes between communities and things like that. Um, this is a painting of just some stickball players um, from the 1780s, I believe. And so you can see here, um, they have very little protective equipment and they use, and the game is a cross between um, lacrosse and rugby. They have the two sticks that are called kabacha, uh, probably not saying that correctly, and they have little scoops on the end, and then there's a small ball called a toa, and basically you have to grab the ball and then throw it and hit a goalpost that's about two inches wide. Um, Back at, you know, several hundred years ago, the playing field was kind of loosely defined. You would have several hundred people playing this at one time, and it could be a hundred foot long or several miles long. Um, this is the modern version of Choctaw Stickball, and so I wanted to show the contrast. Um, they still play the game today, but they actually have um, standardized rules around it. This is a game that they play on sort of um, high school football fields, and there's 60 people on the field at a time, 30 people on each side. Um, you can see that some of the, they still don't wear the protective equipment, and some of them have the skirts or apron that are a callback to um, what the players had on from the, the painting I showed you. And you can see right at the bottom in the middle, there's a little orange um, toa, which they're all trying to grab so that they can throw it and hit this pole that is on the other end of the football field. Um, going to a stickball game is very exciting. I was allowed to stand on the sidelines because we were invited by the tribe to come and observe, talk to the tribe, talk to the elders, find out everything we could about stickball because they wanted to work with us to help them translate it into a video game. And so you're standing on the sidelines and people are getting tackled and you have to, I, I had to run away one time because <laughs> they broke through sort of like uh, the, the boundary that they'd set and uh, toppled over on the benches. They also have um, each um, community has a team that will come and play these games. So it's very ingrained in the community. This game is played by um, young and old, men and women, and every year they have a fair where they have their big tournament between the various communities like Pearl River, Bakchiro. Um, each group also has their set of drummers that come and stand on the sidelines and they're drumming. There's people in the stands. It's very much that energy of the high school football game. So you can imagine it was somewhat of a challenge just to figure out how to translate this into a game. We, had, we were working with the tribe and they were funding it. It was an initiative they were interested in doing because they wanted to um, get kids excited about STEM and um, uh, they thought that video games was a good way to do this. They also wanted to use this as an opportunity to showcase stickball so that they could share it with other people that were not um, aware of it. And also it gives the community a sense of pride to have a sport that they play and enjoy actually represented in a video game. So we used the Unreal Engine. Um, that seemed the best choice at the time. And the tribe itself didn't have um, a game development team. So we hired um, some developers that worked in Los Angeles, and they flew out and be, were part of this whole big group where we had, the chief was involved, 
Um, we had uh, the youth were involved, so we talked to the middle school kids and the high school kids, and everyone came together initially to kind of brainstorm what they thought the game uh, would be like. And because it's a sports game that in real life features 60 players on the field, that was one of the big challenges, is like how realistic could we actually be with the technology limitations we had? And if you do play video game sports games, like Madden or NBA, you know that there's a lot of AI involved in setting your teams up and running the plays, and we certainly didn't have the time, resources, or money to invest in um, programming AI that would you know, do all of the, what all the stickball players would do. So we instead decided to create a multiplayer game where we would do five versus five, and um, we modeled the characters and put in just sort of the basic stickball rules where you would have 10 live players that could get together on a local area network, five on each side, and then they could play the basic game where they were able to pick the ball up and throw it and then hit um, the goalposts. The tribe was very involved in looking at all the iterations of the, the game that we did. In fact, the field and the game is modeled after the field that I was showing you pictures of with the players. Um, we had to make a few uh, concessions because this is a video game. So you'll see like the UI element that allows you to aim the ball. The ball, of course, is larger, so that's more visible than it might be in real life. And of course, just having five players um, on each side it makes it a little less, um, uh, <laughs> it makes it easier to see the ball and what's going on. The main things that they wanted us to try to capture was that feeling of kinetic energy and excitement because it is very much like a football game in the sense that you're tackling people. So it really is a big deal when you tackle somebody to feel like you really tackled them or that when you throw the ball and you hit the goal that that really is a big deal and doesn't happen very often in the game. These are, um, as a side note, once we did sort of the modern version, they were interested in having us put together a different game mode that was based more on sort of um, fantasy culture things. So I just wanted to show you a couple um, characters that we modeled. And if you remember the painting that I showed you at the beginning, you can see that that middle character was inspired by that. And in this mode, each one of these characters had um, different abilities based on sort of what the character was. So the bear character was, you know, really good at tackling. The character inspired by the horse was very fast. Character inspired by the eagle could jump really high. So we created a mode that was not based on realistic stickball at all, um, but that the characters could do really cool moves as they tried to run through um, an environment that looked like a, a wooded area and, and hit these goals. Ironically, we found that when we play tested it with the tribe, that they preferred the modern version of it because it was what they knew and understood and it was the part they were, they were most excited by. Once we had the prototype done and we had talked with the tribe, um, we wanted to uh, showcase it at the fair, the big Choctaw fair that they have every year in July. So we went in July 2019 and showed it to everybody in the community. And we had a place set up with 10 machines and people could sign up for slots. And the fair lasts for three days. And in that three days, we had a line out the door the entire time and several hundred people came and played and really enjoyed that experience. This is an actual stickball team that's sitting down and playing it. And I didn't, I didn't have any video, but just the video of people cheering and just having the best time playing this game is, is really amazing. And you can see that's their coach. This is, um, I think, a middle school team. The guy on the end is um, a professional stickball player, and he is the one that has to protect the goal, which is that large post. He's probably seven feet tall, um, <laughs> and that is his daughter. And you can see here that this is a game that appealed to all ages. So she's sitting there watching him play, and then he's playing with a couple high school boys. Um, I thought this was a great picture. This was um, one of the young ladies that was part of the Choctaw Princess pageant thing. And just to show how powerful it is when communities can see themselves reflected in their games. And it's really important to go and find opportunities like this so that you can spark that excitement. Um, we did do special programs, kind of as a quick wrap up here. 
with middle school and high school students where we went and taught, taught them the basics of sort of game development and several of them I'm still in touch with and now are planning to, when they go to college, to study how to make games. All right, now's your chance to ask questions. No, you, why are you running? <laughs> Can't get away that easy. Now's your chance to ask questions about representing culture through games. Well, I'll go here, then here, then there, because that's closer to me. First question. Oh, no, he just gave me a high five. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, there is a cost attached to it, and I guess it really depends on, I mean, obviously, you should, I'm happy to talk with you after to kind of find out information. We, we have, the group that I work with, we've had different people approach us. Um, this, in this particular example, the tribe had some money that they wanted to use specifically for this program. Um, in other places, we might be able to find grants or something to help fund something like that. All right, next question coming over here. I was wondering if you had thought about pitching it as a side quest to a MMO that might have the server space to see what it would be like with a full 30 on 30 team or, you know, 200 versus 200 group because, I mean, like the dynamics of the game would change with more people and I think that that would be a great way to just uh, shake out some of the possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. We were definitely interested in taking this game a bit further and um, getting more people involved. I will say, unfortunately, the pandemic kind of halted some of those plans because I showed you we were at the fair in 2019, but then um, the project's been on pause basically for two years during the pandemic. But yeah, they, we were definitely looking at things like that or looking for ways to bring this to more people so that they could play and experience it. All right, next question coming to you from the center aisle here. Hey Heather, um, so when you are developing games, how much of it is, I mean, this is obviously based in a lot of reality and a lot of historical and cultural, you want to make sure you're true to that, but in all of your game development, how much do you go out and really kind of try and create realism within your games and, and um, observe stuff in real life versus create fantasy and imagination out of that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it really depends on the games and sort of what the goals of the games are. Um, you know, when you're working at a, a game at like Fortnite, they kind of already established sort of what it is they want to do and that's a very fantasy cartoon thing. For games like this, it's just a question of, you know, what are they interested in, in conveying and doing? Um, so certainly you're taking inspiration so that you can be culturally appropriate with the things that you're doing. It really kind of just depends on the game. All right, give it up for Heather Chandler. <laughs>